When it comes to iconic slashers, nothing trumps Jason and his hockey mask, but it actually has a longer history than you'd think. Most Friday the 13th fans know that Jason actually got his iconic hockey mask in Friday the 13th Part 3. The need came after Ginny took off his previous mask at the end of Friday the 13th Part 2, and he just went on without it. By the time of Part 3, he went the first half of the film with no mask at all. At the same time, the prankster of this film's crew, Shelly, brought a bunch of masks and gags to prank his friends while they were on vacation. Shelly was wearing his wetsuit and hockey mask when Jason encountered him, and Jason finally found a suitable replacement mask after dispatching of Shelly. Initially, Shelly's friend Vera mistook Jason for Shelly, but the hockey mask would soon become his own trademark. In this film, the mask is fairly clean and white, with three red chevrons standing out. Throughout the course of the film, the mask gathers more dirt and grime after his scuffles with the protagonist Chris during the climax. The mask took its first bit of damage when Chris hit Jason in the head with an axe. The cut in the mask and the bloodstains would linger on for a few films. The follow-up, Friday the 13th, the final chapter, wastes no time in picking up where we left off with Jason. Thus, we actually have the exact same hockey mask prop as the previous film. They just changed up the blood pattern a little bit. Throughout the course of the film, the mask becomes a lot more weathered and damaged as a result of production. You'll notice this when the red chevrons on the cheeks of the hockey mask suddenly disappear by the climax of the film. Half of the forehead chevron had also peeled off by this point. Additionally, a stunt involving Trish hitting Jason's mask with a hammer caused the mask to crack from the axe cut down to the eye hole. It's also a lot more warped and deformed, and doesn't really sit straight on Jason's face anymore, so this mask probably doesn't have much life left in it, unfortunately. Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning, famously doesn't feature Jason in the flesh, but the copycat killer Roy actually uses a replica of Jason's mask with blue markings. The blogger Jason Lives Since 1980 tracked all production masks as originating from the original Part 3 mask, up until Jason Goes to Hell the final Friday. I'll leave a link to the article in the description. When Jason did appear through hallucinations, he dons two separate masks. Originally, we see him with a mask that looks very round and now has a large triangle on the forehead instead of the damaged chevron. The roundness comes from the fact that the straps were applied from the inside of the mask instead of outside as before. The second mask, seen up close in the hospital scene, is the exact same mask as the previous two films, once again with a different blood pattern. This time around, the snaps on the mask have been changed to screws after the mask was cast for replicas. Fans reason that the use of two masks was deliberate by director Danny Steinman to keep the audiences guessing as to if Jason was truly dead or not. Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives, reveals that Tommy Jarvis kept Jason's original hockey mask after killing him in the final chapter. The mask looks visually similar to the first mask of A New Beginning, with a solid triangle on the forehead, and it's also noticeably rounder due to being cast in a heavier material, and now has leather straps instead of elastic. The mask's first damage in the movie comes when Jason is shot in the forehead by Sheriff Garris which leads to a bullet hole being stuck in the mask and some blood stains on the mask. At the end, Jason is finally subdued when Megan cuts his cheek and neck with a motor from a boat. We eventually see the damage in the next chapter. In Friday the 13th, Part 7, The New Blood, Jason's mask is now more rotted and dirty after spending a significant amount of time at the bottom of Crystal Lake. The lower left cheek section has now been cut out from the motor damage. This mask also ignores the bullet damage from Jason Lives. Jason's original mask from Shelly is finally destroyed later on in the film, when the film's hero, Tina, uses her telekinesis to tighten the straps of Jason's mask until it cracks in two pieces. Jason goes the rest of the film without a mask, and emergency crews pick up the mask at the end. Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, opens with Jim, a new prankster, scaring his girlfriend with a replica Jason mask. Jason comes alive and picks up his discarded mask, and gets back to doing what he does best. This mask is a more rotten color with a new chevron pattern and new straps. Oddly enough, it has the axe cut from Part 3, but no other damage carried over. 
The mask is damaged when the film's hero, Rennie, splashes Jason with some toxic waste she found in the New York sewer. He's forced to discard his mask before being washed away entirely. We then catch a glimpse of the damaged mask floating away. Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday, opens with Jason in a new mask that's basically the same as the one from The New Blood, but with new straps. We don't really get an explanation since this is a bit of a reboot of the series from New Line Cinema. Jason is also a lot more monstrous in this film, and the mask is kind of merging with his skin. Anyways, the mask survives Jason being blown up by the FBI and is still attached to his head when he's brought in for an autopsy. When Jason eventually returns to his human form, the mask is back, but there's now damage from the outside of the mask cutting into his right eye. As he's being sent to hell, he gets a blood splotch on the forehead from Steven beating him. While Jason is dragged down to hell by the demons, the mask gets left behind and it's all cracked, battered, and covered with dirt at this point. And as we all know, this is when Freddy comes up to take it. When Jason is tricked into coming back to life by Freddy, he now has a brand new hockey mask with no damage and different straps. It has the same markings as the original Part 3 mask, but the added dirt gives it a dark yellow color. I know Jason X comes next, but this list goes by the in-universe timeline, so bear with me. The Freddy vs. Jason mask receives a lot of damage from Freddy's signature glove during the film. The climax also sees him covered in blood from head to toe. By the end of the film, we can see the deep cuts and cracks in the mask from the fight, and how the right side of the mask has been shattered. Finally on to Jason X, this film puts Jason back in a new, old mask that re-sculpts the hockey mask entirely with a more angular, geometric design. The red forehead triangle is smaller this time, and we're also back to the axe damage from Part 3, and that's larger than it was before. There's also remnants of the motor damage from Jason Lives. By the climax, the mask is destroyed, along with the rest of Jason's body when it's blown apart by KM-14. When Jason is accidentally rebuilt as a cyborg, he has a shiny new hockey mask made for him. The mask is separated from Uber Jason after he enters the atmosphere of Earth 2 and the burnt remains of the mask are seen sinking to the bottom of the lake. This is the final film appearance of the original Jason. The series was rebooted with no connection to the previous entries in 2009. Jason gets his hockey mask in a similar manner after having his sack mask removed by the character Donnie. Instead of using his old mask again, he chooses a new hockey mask he finds in Donnie's attic. It's worth mentioning that there was a slightly different alternate version of this scene filmed where Donnie was actually wearing the hockey mask when he encountered Jason. The mask is similar to the Freddy vs. Jason look with an overall lighter paint job and a more weathered finish. Well, that was my overview of Jason's hockey mask and a little bit of the history behind it in the films. I hope you enjoyed it.